لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك عليك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك لبيك والنعمة Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. This is Asiyu Ansar Ko. I am Rashida Abu Bakar, your regular anchor, welcoming you to another edition of the program. We continue with our review series on the 2024 Hajj, and tonight we shall be looking at the enlightenment program put in place by the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACAN, in order to educate pilgrims on the do's and don'ts during the just concluded Hajj exercise. Details shortly. Also in the program is Making the Heart and other regular segments such as NACO News Diary, which highlight the activities of NACO and other stakeholders in the heart industry. Still coming your way is the announcement of the quiz winner. Keep watching. <laughs> Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. The program kicks off with the news diary. Stay tuned. The Chief of Staff to the President, Femi Bajia Biamila has called for a systemic reform at the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON. The system of the commission is reformed in such a way. The chief of staff stated this during a working visit to the Hajj House on Wednesday this week. He said the visit was a fact-finding one in order to address the challenges bedeviling Hajj management in Nigeria. I know you're putting in a lot of work. I know you guys are doing all you can, but we need to roll up our sleeves and do more. Mr. President is ready to work with you. He wants to work with you, but in a seamless fashion that will actually achieve the, the whole goal behind Hajj. Hajj is not supposed to be um, something that, that will cause pain for anybody. Where there are problems, and that's why we're here, to find out what the issues are, what the challenges are, what the problems are, and where there are problems, to look for ways we can address those problems. Honorable Femi further advised on early preparations for the forthcoming Hajj and to also put in place an efficient Hajj organization. We know the volume that we take every year. And so the preparation for Hajj should not be an ad hoc approach. There should be a stand. It should be a standing, standard preparation that begins from day one. And I think if we can, if we can sit down, put our put our heads together, and begin to fashion ways and means, we I mean ways where we can tick the boxes, know where we've gone wrong in the past, and make corrections, then we're good to go. Also speaking during the visit, the deputy chief of staff to the president. Senator Ibrahim Hassan Hadija urged Narcon to strengthen channels of communication. And we need to be very, very realistic. Uh, so I would advise that the Hajj Commission look very, very closely at the issue of uh, affairs. There has to be some level of transparency in telling people what they are paying for. Responding, Narcon Commissioner of Planning, Research Information Statistics and Library Services, Professor Abubakar Yagawal, said the Commission has started preparing for the 2025 Hajj. Uh, in terms of early preparation, of course, even before coming back from Saudi, we have started. We visited uh, the Wadaratul Hajj in Saudi, where we learned that some countries like Iran already paid everything. So we have to cope from them. We have to learn, inshallah, we are working tirelessly in order uh, to achieve the goal. The Commission's Commissioner of Policy, Personnel Management and Finance, Abdul Razak Aliyu, also spoke during the visit. 
it is important to acknowledge that R24 has passed, while there were challenges, it is evident that there is room for improvement to ensure a better and seamless age experience for our pilgrims. We have made significant progress through the dedicated effort of our hardworking and experienced officers. Highlight of the visit was presentation of souvenirs to the visitors. <laughs> Meanwhile, as part of preparations for the 2025 Hajj exercise, the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, has begun the process of issuing license and allocating slots to private tour operators. A statement to this effect by NACON management says applicants must fulfill the following conditions, among others. Travel agency must be registered with Nigeria's Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC. It must have a minimum share capital of 30 million naira. It must also have a valid certificate of the International Air Transport Association and no criminal record or issues with regulatory bodies. Complete online application form at NACON official site www.nigeriahaj.com.gov.ng 23rd of September 2024 is the closing date for all applications and verification exercise. In other news, the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, says the role of private tour operators in Hajj management cannot be overemphasized. We are partners. Narcon Commissioner of Policy, Personal Management and Finance, Abdul Razak Aliyu, stated this on Wednesday at the Zonal Conference of the Association of Hajj and Umrah Operators of Nigeria in Abuja. I was convinced that the AU, they are partners that are of great importance to the success of Hajj operation in Nigeria. Speaking on the topic, Hajj reforms, role of the tour operators, Ahun President Al Haji Abdul Latif Yusuf Ekundayo highlighted the role played by the Association for the Development of the Hajj Industry and overcoming the challenges bedeviling their businesses, noting that efficient collaboration of all stakeholders will improve the system. To appeal for the cooperation of all our beloved members to key into the Flyer Deal project. This is an opportunity for us to consolidate and work together as brothers and sisters in this business. The more the merrier, they say, and the united we are, the stronger we shall be to achieve a common goal. Other speakers at the conference also underscored the importance of private tour operators in Hajj affairs. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, you are still watching us, you answer the call. A public enlightenment presentation that keeps you abreast of the activities of the National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACON, and other heart related matters. During the 2024 Hajj, NACON State and the FCT mounted Pilgrims Orientation and Enlightenment Campaign to help pilgrims perform the Hajj responsibly. Our spotlight segment coming up next will focus on how NACON and its partners carried out the Enlightenment Campaign for a successful Hajj exercise. Keep watching. Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik Labbaik, labbaik You go round the Kaaba seven times A typical pilgrimage enlightenment session during the 2024 Hajj The enlightenment campaign was carried out all through the Hajj period Months before the Hajj Nakan and the State Pilgrims Welfare Board mounted orientation and enlightenment campaigns. The goal was to provide pilgrims with in-depth understanding of the rights of Hajj and their civic responsibilities while in Saudi Arabia. I want to thank the Almighty Allah still uh, and also to thank our preachers, the ulama that we came with them and also those that now consent to us. They really help us. Our pilgrims get 
enlightenment before the Hajj exercise and they did it successfully. Uh, most of times if you ask them, they will tell you a specific area that they are doing at that time. They will explain to you very well. And, and, and at several points also, we put all of them together in a, in a very big hall where we, where, we, where, we encourage, where we appoint or call what you call the ulamas, people that are vast in art management in the state, to come and give them what you call necessary talk. While the National Ulama team focus on educating pilgrims on the Hajj rights, the various committees established by Nakan and the states paid attention to civic responsibilities. The comprehensive education the pilgrims received equipped them to perform the rites of Hajj with sincerity as well as fulfill their civic duties. The major areas highlighted during the Enlightenment sessions were the four pillars of Hajj, namely understanding the state of Ihram, including the attire, intention, and prohibitions, the rites of circumambulating the Kaaba, known as Tawaf, the importance of standing on the plains of Arafah, as well as the walk between the hills of Safa and Marwa. We have three types of Hajj. First one is At-Tamattu'a. At-Tamattu'a. At-Tamattu'a means to make an intention of Umrah first, then later you now make the intention of Hajj while in Mecca. But here, our intention is going to be Umrah. So, then we we'll proceed. This is what we call Atamatua. The Pilgrims Awareness Sessions were designed by Nakun and the State Pilgrims Welfare Board to support Nigerian Pilgrims during the 2024 Hajj. I must personally, I don't delegate anybody, I must personally educate my, my, my Pilgrims so that they know exactly what to do and I will take the lead so that they will not miss it. Somebody paying almost 7 million naira or paying 8.5 million naira We call me at the end of the day, he, he or she didn't know what to do and waste that, that money, allow us to put me, put me to question the day of judgment. You know, we have been organizing orientation in Nigeria during our uh, activities, onshore activities. And uh, Alhamdulillah, all what we have explained, all what we tell them, Inshallah, we discover that they are working, they are doing well, and uh, uh, there's no any problem. The ulamas engaged the intending pilgrims, and it was uh, really successful. The intending pilgrims have complied by attending the enlightenment campaign on daily basis, and then some of them have the opportunity to throw questions to the ulamas in areas where they need to be enlightened. The pilgrims responded positively to the enlightenment initiatives put in place by Nakan and State Pilgrims Welfare Board. Na farko dai aikin haji gaskiya yana bukatan hakuri sabila da abu ne wanda zaka zo ka hadu da dubban jama'a yanda kake tunanin sa ya wuce wannan gurin sabila da zaka hadu da mutane ne jinsi jinsi wannan yana jin yaran wannan wannan baya jin yaran wannan to wannan iyashi kawai makaranta ne an on coming to arafa he prepared for it by taking his rest the enlightenment momentum was sustained at muna and arafa they stay on the plains of arafa is a key pillar of Hajj. This informed why Nakan's educational initiatives at this site were focused on enhancing the spiritual and practical aspects of the pilgrimage. We should especially pray for the leadership of our country because the leadership of a country, the moment it becomes upright, all affairs of the country will become upright. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal used to say, if I was guaranteed a single prayer that will be answered by Allah, I will direct it for the favor of the leader. Because by that, by his uprightness, the whole affair of the community will be upright. The Muslims should uphold the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He also called 
upon the ummah to the unity sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them which day is this they said the day of arafah which month is this they said the sacred month of dhul hijjah which city are we in he said they said the sacred city of makkah al mukarrama he said your bloods your lives your wealth so also your dignity are prohibited to each one of you as we are today in a sacred day in a sacred month and in a sacred place similarly during the period under review education on civic duties was integrated throughout the pilgrimage pilgrims were taught the importance of respecting local laws and customs maintaining cleanliness and interacting cautiously with fellow pilgrims and local residents among others the pilgrims were also taught how to take advantage of the services rendered to them understanding that the pilgrimage involves significant physical activity nakan placed a strong emphasis on health and safety pilgrims received briefings on how to stay hydrated manage fatigue and recognize signs of health issues medical professionals were available to address any health concerns and provide necessary assistance uh, as soon as they arrive we encourage pilgrims to eat very healthy food um this year like many years for the last 4 5 years has been a very hot um, has been very hot uh so we encourage pilgrims to drink lots of water and then avoid exposure to sun as much as possible if they have no reason to come out they should remain indoors and continue to, to do their ibadat either within the mosque or within their hotel premises now when they come here we also advise them that as much as possible they should find time to rest in between the ibadah period and then for those that develop uh, medical issues we advise them to quickly report to their nearest the nearest health center for assistance at the end of the 2024 hajj season the impact of the efforts of nakan and state pilgrims welfare boards on pilgrims education was evident Pilgrims return home not only with a deeper spiritual connection but also with a high sense of responsibility and awareness. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik labbaik la sharika lak labbaik. Masha Allah the program is as you and sad ko. Next in our lineup is making the hajj. Stay tuned. Labbaik labbaik Allahumma labbaik 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 Allahumma labbaik 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 This is Masjid Al-Quba. It is located about 4 kilometers from Masjid Al-Nabawi or the Prophet's Masjid in Medina. The masjid is among the places recommended for pilgrims to visit while on Umrah or Hajj. What history is associated with the Quba Masjid? Why are pilgrims encouraged to perform prayers in Masjid Al Quba? Masjid Quba has so many fadail. On making the Hajj tonight, Imam Al Hasan Yaqub answers these and other questions. Masjid Quba is the first uh, masjid built, uh, you know, in the history of Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we said, participated in building it actively. And even when some people, some sahabas are coming to say, okay, Ya Rasulullah, let me have this, uh, uh, you know, blocks from you. He say, no, you to go and pick your own. He continue. Why is the masjid named Masjid Al Quba? And the name Quba came about because of a a popular water, um, you know, well that was there. Then it was named the Masjid Al Quba. The Islamic scholar further explains how Allah described the Masjid Al-Quba in the Holy Quran in Surah Tauba verse 108. The Masjid Al-Quba is is um unanimously agreed even though some scholars were of the view that the verse of Surah Tauba 108 la masjidun usisa ala taqwa min awwal yawmin ahqqu an taquma fihi fihi rijalun yuhibbuna and yet aharu wallahu yuhibbul mutahhirin that the, the first mosque the, the most osisa in awali yawmin that was raised was 
build open piety, righteousness, built by the Prophet وسلم, and the Sahaba, those that appeal, is much more better, far away than the Masjid of Munafikun. You know, later the verse is referring to a verse that some Munafikun in Medina, the hypocrites, went and built another mosque trying to, you know, divide the Muslims. What then are the virtues and significance of visiting the Kuba Masjid? What are pilgrims enjoined to do while at Masjid al Kuba? Number one, uh, Masjid Kuba has so many for life. It was established going there to pray by the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was reported to have said, Man fatahara fi baytihi, thumma ata Masjid Kuba. Fasalla fihi salatan kana lahu ta'ajiri umrah. Whoever purify himself at home and make the intention of going to Masjid Kuba to observe a prayer. Now, here we have about uh, three hadiths. One Reported by Bukhari and Muslim is saying that two rakat fasalla raka attain ka umratan aw adli dalika. If you go there and observe two nawafil, two nafila, uh, supergratory prayer, voluntary prayer of two rakat is equivalent to the reward of performing umrah. In the course of the visit, Imam al Hassan Yaqub says, there is no difference between what men and women are encouraged to observe. Alhamdulillah. Now it's time to know the winner of last week's quiz and the question for this week. Good luck. Welcome to the quiz segment. The question in the last episode was, how many times are pilgrims required to walk between Safa and Marwa? The correct answer is seven times. The winner is Abdul Hakim Saeed from Abuja. He provided the answer ahead of others. Abdul Hakim Saeed will be contacted on how Nakon will reach him with the prize he won. A quiz winner will get 25,000 Naira cash prize. This is part of Nakon's efforts in social investment in Nigeria. Now to the quiz for this week and the question is, apart from Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, who was the other person associated with Muqami Ibrahim? Again, apart from Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, who was the other person associated with Mukamu Ibrahim? Text your answer to the number showing on your screen. The winner will be the first person whose correct answer is received. All answers should carry the name and location of sender. Good luck and happy viewing. Once again, good luck to you. Up next are your messages. <laughs> Hami Sushu Aibu from Kaduna State sent in the first message. It says, I commend Nakan for a successful 2024 Hajj. We pray and hope for the best in subsequent Hajj operations. Jazakumullah. The second message came from DSM number 080-3475-0787. It contains this prayer. May Allah bless the Ummah and let us be among those to perform the 2025 Hajj. This is where we draw the curtain on today's program. See you same time, same day next week with another edition of the program. But before we go, remember that you can send your messages, comments, observations, and questions through our mobile phone number and all the social media platforms. Once again, thanks for watching. Ma'asala. <laughs> والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا